What is up guys, it is Q here, bringing you all, finally, the SKS video. I know I've been saying this has been coming for quite a while, and it is, it's finally here. And so yeah, we're gonna make this kind of not necessarily short and simple, but I'm gonna try and run through things at a decent pace. That way the video is not too long, but I still want it to be a comprehensive list. We have a few different subjects to talk about. We have optic mounts, your muzzle devices and barrel add-ons, stocks, magazines, and then a quick overview of ammo. Specifically, kind of the history of 7.62x39 and kind of the my moderate, my suggestion for what I personally use. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's start with optic mounts. Of course, the SKS by default has iron sights, and unlike the AK, it doesn't have a side rail for optics. So that often leads people to ask the question, how can I put an optic on my SKS? Well, there's a few different options. The first thing you can do is remove the rear receiver cover. Um, that, of course, is that little bit at the end that's kind of oval shaped with that flat plate with the pin that you pivot up, pull out, and then it comes out and you can take the bolt out of the rear. Uh, you can actually replace, you can get replacements versions of those that have Picatinny rails on them. Um, you can get that and they just go right in. Um, well, I, sh I, sh I should add a caveat here. Because SKS rifles kind of vary between patterns slightly, kind of like Enfields in a certain way, um, oftentimes you'll have to do some kind of hand like sanding work or um, not sanding, but you know, some uh, you have to do some work to get it to kind of fit in properly. Um, but it's usually not too much of a problem. It usually goes in pretty easy. It just takes a little bit of know-how and a little bit of elbow grease. The next thing is called the Bad Ace mount. Uh, Bad Ace is a pretty good mount. Uh, it will hold zero, and it does not require anything like drilling or tapping. What it does require is you remove the rear sight, but it does work as a backup rear sight. The it uses the rear sight mount to put in a little piece of Picatinny rail, you know, a few inches long, for putting something like a red dot, uh, maybe a shorter scope, uh, maybe a smaller holographic even. Um, and they're pretty good. I, I quite like them. They're my personal favorite. Uh, maybe not the thing that I would suggest the most for everyone, but for me, I prefer something like a T1, you know, small little red dot scope, a micro optic. And it works perfect for that for me. The next one is the Crazy Ivins. There's, there's, it's called the Crazy Ivan SKS scope mount, but there is two different versions of it. The first version is a short one that uh, stretches from the rear of the receiver to just behind where the bolt will fully go. So you can still load with stripper clips. But there's also another version that will extend all the way forward to the front to the front end of the receiver coming close to the barrel. The issue with these guys, um, I will say right off the bat, is it does require a little bit of gunsmithing, some some drilling and tapping, but that's not a huge deal um, if you're willing to put in the work, or you could of course take it to a gunsmith, and a competent gunsmith should be able to install it pretty easy. Um, the long one also works as a brass deflector, and as far as I have seen and as far as I have known from reviews, personal experience, and friends that have had it, um, they hold zero pretty well. Uh, the only issue is when you disassemble the rifle, it can be a little bit more of a inconvenience just because you have that rail there, but it's not too terrible. The next one is um, something that you see on AKs, uh, fairly frequently, and that is replacing the gas tube cover with one that has Picatinny rail mount. Now this isn't a terrible idea, but the issue that I have always had with this is that personally a lot of the SKSs that I've gotten to handle, that gas tube cover can be kind of loose and rattly, especially on my SKS personally. It, it, it rattles around a lot, and so I wouldn't be confident that it would hold zero very well. But if you just want a super cheap and super easy replacement to where you can have an optic of uh, you'll be hitting approximately in this area it works good for that but if you're trying to do some serious shooting and you want to be fairly accurate i wouldn't recommend it especially since it's going to be out in front of the rear sight um and so if you wanted to use something like a scope you'd have to use something like a pistol scope that has a really long eye relief 
Next up is another version, uh, or kind of, we're circling back to the receiver, the rear receiver cover. Um, you can get them to where not only do they just go in and bolt on with the bolt, but they also have some additional um, clamps on the side that will go onto the sides of the receiver, and you drill and tap that to maintain a consistent zero, because those top covers, normally, even if you get it just perfect, they're still not going to hold zero very well, just because there's not a whole lot of positive locking on that thing. All the lockup is really happening at the rear. So there is another option for that if you like that style, but want to have a better zero, you can go with that. Uh, the next thing is called the Quick Rail. Quick spelled as K-W-I-K. Um, the Quick Rail is kind of an in-between for something like the Crazy Ivan and the Bad Ace. It doesn't require any like drilling and tapping. Uh, all it requires is a new bolt for that rear receiver cover because it's going to, it has a front little like duckbill looking thing that you'll take the rear side out, you'll put it in and you'll rotate it down and you'll put that pin because it'll clamp onto the receiver like that, you know, say this is the receiver, it's going to clamp on and that bolt will go through all of it and so that gives you a pretty positive lock and it's even easy, super easy to disassemble a gun because you literally just do the same thing. You pop your bolt and the quick rail pops off and your receiver cover slides off and I personally think it's one of the better options. Um, and the last one that I have here for you is not one that I would recommend. Um, out of all of these, this is the one that I'm the most skeptical of, and that is the one from Brass Stacker. Now, to say that the product is bad, I'm not going to say that at all. I'm sure it is an excellent product, but the issue comes in, it's kind of like the Crazy Ivans, except for it's not compatible with all SKS stocks. It's only compatible with original SKS stocks and supposedly Tapco stocks, but there's also a little note on their website that says they don't have like the drill and cut dies for the Tapco stock yet. So it kind of seems like they don't have it. Um, not only that, it also, it, yeah. And you also have, it has to be model specific as well. You have to pick your specific model. And so that's why I'm kind of like, mm, I don't recommend this one. Uh, if I were to recommend one for you guys, I would say um, the Bad Ace Mount and the Quick Rail. Those would be the ones that I suggest. Let's jump over to muzzle devices now. Um, the first thing that I've seen um, that is fairly common is their kind of clamp on muzzle brakes. They will slide over the barrel and they twist and use the cleaning rod and its hardware to keep it tensioned in place. Um, Supposedly they work pretty well and they're pretty affordable, um, and so I guess as long as you're not beating the crap out of it, you should have some, you should be fine, um, but I would be making sure that it's not coming untwisted or you might, you know, launch and, and you know, you'll launch your, muzz your muzzle device downrange. <clears throat> um, the next one is kind of like that one, but they are bolt-on, and so they slide over the barrel, and they use set screws, and they simply bolt onto the muzzle. Um, some of these have you drill into the barrel. Some of them simply the set screw just holds it in place and tensions it. Um, if you are going to go with that, make sure it's tensioned well enough to where when you pull the trigger, you're not going to launch that downrange because it wasn't tight enough. Um, but yeah, supposedly those work pretty well as well. But now let's circle back to the one that I would suggest the most, and that is threading the muzzle. You can thread an SKS muzzle. Um, there is actually a company that sells their muzzle brake as well as a muzzle threading kit. Just make sure that if you do it yourself, that you're being careful to evenly apply those threads and you're applying them how they should be applied because you don't want to apply your threads at an angle because if you mount a muzzle device on there, you could get something similar to a baffle strike, which if you don't know, is when a suppressor is mounted and it sags in one direction, usually down because of... <clears throat> excuse me, excessive weight, and so when the bullet comes out, it hits the baffles and blows the suppressors out, causing a pretty catastrophic um, accident. So if you're not confident that you can do it well yourself, but you still want to be able to use a lot more muzzle devices by simply threading and unthreading them on, 
uh, I would take it to a gunsmith. They should be able to do it pretty well. Um, and the last thing that I quickly want to talk about for barrels is bipods, because pretty much any bipod you get on an SKS is going to be barrel mounted in some way. Either the clampons or companies like ATI have a bipod that uses the hardware of which the bayonet connects to, of the, you know, the swinging, the folding and swinging bayonet, um, to attach a folding bipod on. And so those work as well. Pretty cool. Okay, so next up, let's jump over to stocks. Stocks is going to be a pretty quick one. Um, first up, let's start with kind of the, the cheap stocks, which would be like mine and the Ramline stocks. Um, they are basically both the same. They're cheap polymer stocks with a side folding stock. Um, Sorry, my cat was sharpening his claws. Anyway, <laughs> um, I would not recommend these unless you really, really, really want to get rid of your old wooden stock for just something that's not a wooden stock. I wouldn't suggest these. They're pretty flimsy feeling. They're not exactly sturdy. The stocks wobble. It's just not exactly the best option. Um, next up, you can actually get Tapco stocks, believe it or not. No, I'm kidding. Everybody knows about the SKS. Tapco stocks. Tapco has been making SKS stocks for years. They're not bad. They're not great. It's, you know, a polymer stock for your SKS. Um, the next up is kind of the next step up from that, in my opinion, and that is Archangel. Archangel actually does have SKS stocks. You can get an Archangel SKS stock, and it's like just like an M1A Archangel stock. It's, you know, the fancy setup, and, you know, it's like having a Gucci SKS. Uh, they're pretty mm, expensive though, so... Mm -hmm. If you're willing to put in that kind of money, maybe you have a really good example of an SKS that shoots particularly well. Why not? Uh, next up is the one that I quite like, and that is the Fab Defense stock. Uh, the Fab Defense stock um, is a polymer stock. It's kind of mm, reminiscent of the Archangel, but not as fancy. It has a side folding stock with a buffer tube adapter, so you can use uh, M4 style stocks, you know, AR-15 M4, um, of your choice, and it will also fold. Um, it also has pick rail on the top and bottom, and the magazine release has a new interface to where um, because normally on the SKS you pull the little like little trigger to release the magazine uh, on that it replaces well not replaces but it adds on by adding a paddle and so it's like a paddle release like an AK or a H and K product like a G3 or an MP5 that has that paddle release and how it works is it simply goes in front of that little thing and when you push on push your finger down it pulls it back, and then it goes back forward when you release it. And so it kind of makes magazine changes and opening the magazine a little bit easier, and that's why I personally like the Fab Defense one. Um, the next one is from, it's it's called the Sabertooth, but the Sabertooth is less of a stock and more of like a full chassis upgrade. It's milled aluminum, it's really solid. You've got pick rails. You've got all kinds of fancy stuff with uh, able to be used for all kinds of different magazines. It's high quality and it kind of, <clears throat> in my opinion, is as modern as you can really get with an SKS stock, but you're definitely going to be paying a pretty good price. They run more than $300 on average, but they are pretty nice from what I've seen. I haven't been able to find a ton of them here in the U.S., but they, you, they're they pretty popular in Canada, it seems, where the SKS, I believe, is an unrestricted rifle there. Um... Next up, I just want to briefly talk about it, uh, Milserp stocks, the standard wooden stocks, they work fine. You shouldn't, you know, if you're wondering, ah, oh, should I really replace this? If you don't want to, you don't have to. If the wooden stock works fine for you, it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. They're good stocks. And on top of that, there is always, of course, the option of omitting the stock or cutting it short or removing it from a folding one to have a pistol grip only SKS. I would not suggest it. Because while I have shot my SKS with the stock folded a few times just for fun, it is not at all practical, and it's not something that I would want. Because the SKS is a fairly heavy rifle, it has a fairly long barrel most of the time, and it just doesn't balance well like that. And so you're better off having, like, if you really want to shoot an SKS as, like, 
a pistol grip only just get a full side folding stock like the ram line and j that way when you inevitably want to shoot it as a rifle you can Next, let's jump over to magazine options. So the first one is your standard magazines. Of course, the SKSs were originally designed to use 10-round fixed internal magazines. I personally love these things. Well, I don't have one on my SKS, that's because that's how my SKS came. Um, they work fine, you know, if you only need 10 rounds, you can always load with stripper clips, unless you use one of the optic mounts previously mentioned that would cover the receiver. Um, and so that kind of leads into the next thing, which is the retrofit kind of duckbill magazines, which is what mine uses. Those are the magazines with that really long, like, duckbill looking thing, because you got your magazine, but then you got that long piece of plastic or metal. Uh, that's to interface with where the old magazine originally hinged at. That's why it also kind of has that little dip shape at the end. Um... These work great. There's all kinds of different quality. Um, capacity, you get 10, 20, 30, 40 round box magazines, and even 75 round drums. Um, you can get high quality ones. You can get lower quality, cheaper ones. You can get polymer. You can get metal. All different capacities. They are what I would recommend if you aren't particularly thrilled with a fixed magazine and you'd really have rather have detachable. Next up is something that I've seen talked about, and that's SKSs using AK mags. Unfortunately, there aren't any conversions for that. You cannot convert an SKS to AK mags because it just was never meant to. The SKS and the AK were developed independently of each other, and for that result, there's no real good way to convert an AK mag to fit into an SKS. I'm sure somebody has probably done it at some point, but those SKSs that use uh, AK mags that are, I believe, Norinco guns, they have been built from the factory to specifically do that and interface with AK mags properly. So it's not happening. Um, another thing <clears throat> is, of course, if you don't get the fab defense stock with the paddle release, but you still want a paddle, uh, there actually is something called the super mag release, which basically does the exact same thing, except it just bolts on in front of the trigger guard and accomplishes the exact same thing. Um, so that is a thing. The last thing is something that I'm not going to suggest you do. It's not something I'm going to... I'm not going to... I'm going to tell you that it exists, and I'm going to tell you that it is something people do, and it is fairly popular, but I'm not going to tell you to do it or not to do it, because that is not my place. And that is not my place. You know, I'm not responsible for you. You are not responsible for me, really. Um, and so at the end of the day, it's up to you. I just want you guys to be aware that this is an option. Um, AK mags, of course, do not drop free on a closed bolt, and that is because the bolt has two um, really ribs that run along the bottom of the bolt, the bottommost part of the bolt. Those are actually there because the bolt will or those ribs will slide in between the um, <clears throat> magazine, um, the magazine lips, the lips, the feed lips of the magazine. My bad, sorry, I kind of got a little jumbled in my own head there. But it interfaces with the feed lips, and so it locks onto the feed lips. And so that's why you can't pull it out, because those feed lips are grabbing onto the bolt. Well, less so they're grabbing onto it, and more the bolt is sliding in and preventing it from being pulled out. Um, you can actually grind those down. You can grind those ribs down. Um, be careful if you do it. Don't do it too far back. Um, there are tutorials that you can find to do it, and it will allow your mags to drop free. But like I said, I'm not going to say that you should do it. I'm not going to say that you shouldn't. Just that you can. Just make sure you're very careful modifying, you know, uh, a major pressure bearing component such as the bolt. Finally, um, let's talk about ammo. So the first thing that I want you guys to be aware of is um, corrosive versus non-corrosive ammo. Uh, smokeless powder, also known as nitrocellulose, which is what we use as modern gunpowder, um, of course, originally had corrosive salts in it. Um, and so if you are using old Milserp ammo, uh, chances are that it could be corrosive. And so if you are using corrosive ammo, make sure to clean your bore every time you shoot it or it will cause pitting and will erode the bore. 
with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about <clears throat> kind of the history of 762 by 39 very briefly. So, of course, it was originally known as the M43 cartridge because it came out in 1943 alongside the RPD. They had been working on this cartridge for a while before this and had something like 300 different cartridge designs. And everybody that was anybody in Russian arms manufacture was working on this project. Finally, they decided on a cartridge that had a 41 millimeter long case with a bullet that is slightly shorter than our standard 7.62x39 bullets today. Um, this was the original M43 cartridge, and it was used up until 1947. In 1947s, they would switch to what we now know as 7.62x39 with the PS cartridge. The PS cartridge, which a steel core was, it had a steel add-on and a steel core, I believe, with, of course, lead. It was a pretty basic lead bullet with a little steel add-on at the very end to stabilize it in flight and give it some added weight. Um, originally, the original cartridge, the original M43, um, initially did not have a boat tail um, because they did not think that it would affect accuracy at sh the shorter ranges that they would be intended to, but it turned out that it did, so they very quickly went to a boat tail with subsequent designs. Um, the reason that it was originally 40, the reason that we went from 41 millimeters down to 39 millimeters is they decided in with the 1947 update to the PS, they used a slightly longer bullet, but they wanted to keep the overall cartridge length so it wouldn't be too hard to convert existing guns over to this slightly updated cartridge. And so the bullet is slightly longer and the case is slightly shorter. Um, in... <clears throat> And this was originally, by the way, um, a 123 grain bullet. That was the original standard that we have. Um, in 1967, Yugoslavia would come out with what they would call the M67 cartridge. It was considered to be an upgrade um, over the PS cartridge because it deleted that steel add-on at the tail, which made it a shorter bullet. They are quite a bit shorter, the actual projectile. And it also made it lighter, but it also had one effect. See, because the bullet was so stable in flight upon hitting a target, it wouldn't really tumble at all, not creating ideal wound channels for lethality, and so the Yugos wanted to alleviate this problem by deleting the core, which made it tumble a little bit more and gave them what they considered to be a better bullet. Um, eventually, the Russians would update the PS cartridge with a new cartridge, which would be the PB. And that was in 1989. The new PB cartridge had the steel add-on. It also had a steel core and was overall just a significantly heavier and more modern bullet. Well, not necessarily heavier, but a more sturdy bullet. It wasn't as soft. That was the main, that was the main thing that really changed was the bullet material. And that became the standard for 7.62x39. They, after 1989, they stopped using um, the old PS, or stopped producing the old PS cartridges because they didn't need to. The PB was considered better and more modern, and it worked in old guns. Um, another cartridge that would be developed by military would be the Chinese Type 56. It's a very basic steel core lead bullet with a copper or brass wash over it. Nothing special. Um, and then also, a little fun fact here. I got a couple of little fun facts for you. They did actually have two different tracer cartridges for 7.62x39 that the Russian military would use. One of them would be an upgrade over the original with a longer burn time and I think like a more visible trail. And the other little fun fact is that there actually was originally a 7.62x39 subsonic cartridge meant to be given out with the PBS-1 suppressor with AKs that were threaded to use that. Uh, this subsonic cartridge was called the U.S. cartridge, and it was a heavy and very long bullet. It was significantly longer than the standard 7.62x39 because that was the easiest way they could give it more weight was to simply give it more mass, and so that's what they did. So now let's jump into um, kind of modern ammunition. So of course there is always Milserp ammo. There's a good chance that it is corrosive. Um, you might find armor penetrating, which usually has a black tip with a green band painted around the base of the projectile. Um, you, of course, have just basic ball ammo like PS and PB, um, or you can get, of course, 
a very interesting, not necessarily milserp cartridge, but it is a surplus cartridge, and it's a special kind of check low recoil round. It uses a very lightweight bullet that results in... It, it manages to cycle the action of an AK or an SKS reliably, but it doesn't cause the bolts to really slam into the receiver. It just, it cycles it, but that's about it. It doesn't have a whole lot of energy. And so it causes the guns to shoot incredibly soft. It's remarkable. And so someone that's learning to shoot an SKS, which, you know, an SKS or an AK, 762 by 39 is known to be a rather potent intermediate cartridge. You can start them off with this, and it works pretty well. Um, I quite like it. The only issue is that all of it is corrosive ammo because it's older ammunition, kind of older cheap ammo. So just make sure to clean your bore after every use, and you'll be fine. Um, just do not leave those corrosive salts in there, or they will, over time, destroy the internals of your barrel. Um, what I personally would recommend for ammo, this is what I use. Of course, I'm not going to actually jump into all of the modern ammunition because 762 by 39 is so prolific and so common that there is just tons and tons of different bullet weights and velocities with companies and brass, steel case, bimetal, whatever. There's just a huge amount of variance. What I personally use is wolf ammo, which is Russian-produced ammo. The stuff I use is the steel case. I use steel case full metal jacket when I'm shooting. It also comes in soft point for ideal for hunting because 7.62x39 is quite the good hunting cartridge for deer and similarly sized animal. And it also comes in hollow point for self-defense slash home defense situations. Um, Another few companies that I could suggest, uh, Brown Bear um, is quite um, quite well reputable. They're quite reputable as an ammo producer, and so I would recommend, me personally, either Wolf or Brown Bear. They're both on the more affordable side. Wolf is, I think, the most affordable that isn't Milserp ammo. I, as a rule of thumb, try not to buy Milserp ammo because who knows what kind of condition it's in. Um, the Wolf stuff that I use is steel case. Um, there's always the argument of steel case versus brass case. There's been tons of tests that have really disproven that steel case is bad for your gun. Steel case is going to be just fine. Of course, you don't reload steel case, though. So if reloading is a thing, steel case is not reloadable. Um, but it works fine. Um, I've never had any issues with the Wolf ammo except for one cartridge that some it, it seemed like it might have been something went wrong and so it was downloaded and so i it caused a malfunction but past that that is the only one that i've had an issue after putting hundreds and hundreds of rounds of the exact same brand and type of cartridge down range and so i would highly recommend it and so now let's kind of get into my conclusions really quickly um, and what I would suggest for optics mounts, I would either suggest the bad ace or the quick rail, depending on the kind of optic you want to use. Um, the muzzle device, I would suggest honestly either getting it threaded or... Mm, yeah, get it threaded or go with the bolt-ons. The, the bolt-ons seem to be fairly popular and fairly reliable for not going flying down range, and they don't take a whole lot of modification to your weapon. As for stocks, there is a clear and present winner to me, and that's the Fab Defense stock. I think it perfectly blends affordability with modern features. As far as magazines, um, once again, another clear winner here is, in my opinion, the retrofit duckbill magazines. Um, I think that, personally, they're, they're everywhere. There's different qualities, different prices, different capacities. It really is the most... the most flexible option, because you can either run, you know, if you only want to do some plinking, you can run 10-round mags, use stripper clips, or if you want to maybe shoot a little bit more, you can use 30-round mags, even the 75-round drums, but be wary, the 75-round drums are notoriously unreliable, which does not surprise me, because they're kind of cheap. And for ammo, like I said, um, Wolf, the, the Wolf ammo or the Brown Bear, uh, both work pretty well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, 
I know it's a little bit later than I said it would be, but uh, originally that is. It is going to be hopefully out, and everything will be prettied up and uploaded before the end of January. And so, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope this was informative and short enough to where, the, you know, it allows a good amount of information and ideals for you guys. I made sure all of the things that I have mentioned you can find on the internet very, very easily. It's not going to take you, you know, a lot of deep searching through, like, forums and stuff to find all of this stuff you can find on, like, the first page of Google. So I made sure to do that. Um, so, yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, you know, the like button's down below. Free, free, feel free to hit it. It doesn't cost you anything. It only takes a second. If you are new to the channel, uh, why don't you hit that subscribe button? It's free. Um, and you can always unsubscribe later if you end up not liking the rest of my content. And of course, as always, my Patreon is in the link down below. I don't expect anyone to do anything with that yet because I'm very small, but it is always there if you want to take a peek. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Um, I believe my next video is probably going to be on the ammo shortage and what's going on and when the end will be. So I'll see you guys then.